Uh, Tonight I was going to share from Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. So we've been going through a series on prayer, and last week we talked about one of the reasons to pray is because we face temptation and the fact that we need God's assistance through it. And tonight we're going to look at another reason to pray, which is supplication, a word that we don't use a lot in modern times. But supplication basically means request, asking, possibly even begging, but being humble before God. So supplication, making a request. And tonight, particularly, I want us to look at supplication for ourselves. So often we think about making supplication for others, praying for people. And I mean, that's what we do every Wednesday night going through our prayer list is making supplication, making requests for various people in our church, in our community, in our families. But what about for for ourselves? You know, that almost sounds selfish in a way. And we'll see that it really is important to pray for yourself, to make supplication for yourself as well. And we'll continue to be reminded as well with prayer that prayer changes things. So if prayer didn't change change things, there'd really be no reason to pray, would there? But we know that God calls us to pray and that prayer changes things. So Matthew 7, 7 through 11, the words of our Lord Jesus. It says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Supplication. I've actually preached on the parallel passage of this in Luke before. But it's amazing how God brings you to the Word for different purposes at times and revealing new things with it. But this is very much a focus on on prayer. So again, supplications, requests, which can be for others, but also can be for ourselves. So it's asking God, even begging God humbly for Him to intervene in our situation, whatever that situation may be. And I don't know about you, but I find it difficult at times to pray for myself. I actually had a conversation with someone recently that was sharing something similar. They were asking me to pray about something. They said, I feel selfish asking someone else to even pray about something of myself. And for me, a lot of times, I just forget about praying for myself. I pray, you know, for the the sermon and bringing the message and things of that nature. But like if I'm sick or something like that, I often don't automatically think about praying for myself. But I do pray for the others that are sick. But we should pray for ourselves. If you look at the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, Jesus says for us to pray for our bread, our daily bread. We're praying for ourselves in that, aren't we? Praying for our needs, the things that we need to, to survive. Also in the Lord's Prayer, we're praying for forgiveness for our sins. Also in the Lord's Prayer, we're asking God to deliver us from temptation. So we see that it is very appropriate to pray for ourselves. Also, we see the disciples after Peter and John were arrested for preaching the name of Jesus. When the disciples gathered back together, they prayed for boldness for themselves. Paul, last week we talked about the thorn in the flesh. He prayed for deliverance from that thorn in the flesh. And David, you go through the Psalms. David prays for himself a lot, doesn't he? And I I love that we have the Psalms because it's just such a beautiful picture of what prayer is, how uh, just raw prayer can be. But praying for ourselves, and even our Lord Jesus prayed for himself. When he was agonizing in the garden, he was praying for himself and what he was about to face. So it's definitely appropriate for us to pray for ourselves. And here Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. Those three verbs, ask, seek, and knock, in the Greek really are in present tense. So it's really saying that it's a continuous action. It's not ask one and done, seek one and done, knock one and done. We continually are going to God. It should be daily and often throughout the day. Pray without ceasing. So ask, seek, and knock in a present tense sense. So it's continuous action. What are we asking for from God? Well, one thing is we should be asking for wisdom. There are a lot of difficult situations we face in life that we need wisdom. 
And I'm afraid we see a lot of our, our leaders and even people in our family making decisions that are obviously unwise. And sadly, we've made unwise decisions as well. We need to be going to God and asking for wisdom. We need to go to God and ask for clarity in the situation. Maybe we know kind of what to do if we knew the situation fully, but sometimes we need clarity because we see things kind of blurry at times, or we may have just little bits of information. So praying for God to really give us clarity, give us that opportunity to understand it. Praying for strength. You know, when the disciples prayed for boldness to speak the name of Jesus after they had been told not to speak the name of Jesus, we need that kind of strength. There are a lot of difficult situations that we face that if we're not asking God for strength, how do we get through them? How do we get through them? Uh, we said in here several times before that people that face, you know, tragedies in their life or whatever the situation may be, how do you do it without God? It's hard to imagine, is it? We go to God. We ask Him for strength through the situation. And we ask for material needs, too. It's not that we're asking for a new private jet or a yacht. But we're asking for that daily bread. We're asking for God to intervene in situations. Maybe it's for the healing of our bodies. We've been praying for Mr. Jimmy, and I'm sure Mr. Jimmy's probably been praying for himself too, haven't you? <laughs> God hears and God moves. God acts upon these prayers. And he can, He's concerned about the things that we face. You know, when Jesus came and did the healings and provided, even whenever he fed the multitude with the little fish and bread, you think about God was giving a taste of the kingdom because he was healing the sick. He was feeding. People had the things that they need. God, he was giving that. So he cares about the material needs and the things that we go through. So ask, he says, and you will receive. Ask. Also seek. So what are we seeking? I think a very easy way to clarify this is we're seeking his will. Whatever that may be in that particular situation, what is his will for us? What is his will in this trial that we're facing? And we also pray. We're seeking for opportunities. We should be doing that. Sometimes we don't do that, that part of the prayer, but we should be seeking because God gives divine opportunities to speak to people every day. We don't know what that situation is. We just need to have our, our ears open, don't we? Because God's working around us. But are we seeking those opportunities? Are we praying for God? Give me boldness today. Give me clarity today. And give me this opportunity to speak your, your word. And sometimes it's just a word of encouragement to our brothers and sisters in Christ. That goes a long way. To speak to each other. Seek these opportunities. And it says knock. And it shall be open. I think you connect the opportunities very much to that too. Knock for these opportunities. What does God want you to do? Are you knocking on that door? Are you knocking for the opportunities to, to walk with Him? Now ask, seek, and knock can be very, very broad. And in pretty much anything is supplication is us going to God, seeking His will, and God hears us. But here's a, a key in verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. To receive, we've got to ask. That's the beginning of it right there. If we are praying and we're not praying for these needs for ourselves, why do we expect to receive them? God wants us to commune with Him. He wants us to seek His will. Again, prayer changes things. And Jesus says if we ask, if we seek, we knock, we will receive. Now, is that just like an open meal ticket to basically whatever we want that God's going to give it to us? It's not. It's always within God's will. Always within God's will. And as we grow as Christians, I believe we continue to, or should be, adjusting to, submitting to, and knowing His will better. And you know, it gets easier to pray His will when you know His Word. When you know what God desires of you. There's so much in life that seems like it's a mystery, but God has given us so much in His Word. His Word is sufficient for all things for life and godliness. Are we seeking his will. And when we pray within His will, He is going to answer. And we've talked about too with prayer that God always answers prayer. It's either yes, no, or wait. And many times that praying for strength is the waiting. Because we want that healing now. We want that need filled right now. But He says wait. He has a purpose in it. He has His timing in everything. Because God is going to give us good gifts. Verse 9 and 10. What man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him the stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? So Jesus is comparing 
our earthly father and our heavenly father here. So if our earthly father is giving us good things, why in the world should we not expect good gifts from our heavenly father, who is holy? He is going to give us good gifts. He is going to give us good answers to our prayers, to our situations. And you know, knowing God's word is so important for prayer too because we understand his character. Looking at creation, we see that God is a magnificent creator, a magnificent artist. But to understand who he is as being holy and loving and merciful and just, we've got to know his word. And as you continue to rest in his character and know who he is, you're going to be able to seek him and his will so much easier because you trust him. You know his character. That God never fails. That God is holy and loving and merciful and just. This is our Heavenly Father that's only going to give us these good things that we ask for. Romans 5 and 8 is a beautiful passage that we can understand the fact that God is good and we're not. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Think about that. We don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve these good gifts that God gives us. But he does because he loves us. Because he is holy. Because he is merciful. And because he is just. This is our heavenly father that we are petitioning. We should expect these good gifts from God. Because he is good. All good gifts come from God. It says in the scripture that there is no variation or shadow of his turning. In other words, he's unchanging. The fact that God is holy is always going to be. The fact that God is loving is always going to be. That he's merciful is always going to be. That he is just is always going to be. All those are God's character. You know, God cannot do some things that we can do. And that sounds like a bold statement, doesn't it? God cannot lie. God cannot sin. We can lie. We can sin. But we can trust that God is not going to change. All those good gifts... So when we have these bad things in our life, we shouldn't be blaming God for the bad things in our life. Too often these bad things in our life because of our own sin. Sometimes it's because of the sin of others. Sometimes because just the natural fallenness of the world. But you know, God also works many good things out of bad situations. I think we can all attest to that. We may not choose the route of sickness, the route of injury, the route of Whatever it may be, but God is building our character and allowing us to be able to minister to other people as well. One thing that uh, the Beth and I have gone through personally is, is infertility. And you know, it gives you a whole other empathy and understanding of people that are going through that situation. We would not have chosen that. It's been very, very hard. But boy, God is merciful. And God has a purpose in everything that He allows. I believe that. I know His character. And I know that he's going to give us good things. He's not going to pull a bait and switch. Not at all. You know, we have assurance of heaven, don't we? We have assurance that we come to Jesus Christ, we are saved. He's not going to pull a bait and switch. What kind of world would we live in if God was a changing God? Who decided to borrow that, well, that's not the way you're going to get in heaven anymore. No, we have assurance in him. We have rest in him. And he, if we ask for that bread, he's not going to say, I'm going to give you bread and then give us a stone. Or if we ask for that fish, he's going to say, I'm going to give you a fish and then he gives us a serpent. No, no, God does not lie. And God does not change. God is good. Verse 11, Jesus summarized. If you then, that's you people, everybody, this audience, these disciples that hear this. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? God is good. This comparison of us to God, there is no question that we are naturally bent towards evil. That is our nature. That is our fleshly nature. And then when we come to Christ, we receive a new nature. We are a new creation. You know, those old beliefs and old world values are falling away, but we're not perfect yet. Our Father's we're not perfect. Have not been perfect in the things they did. We have not been perfect in the things that we have done for our children or those in our family. Now we have it. But if we give good things to our children, and good parents do, they desire good things for the children. They would give anything they could for their children. You know, I've I have um, looked back on my own upbringing and realizing how we really didn't have a lot of money growing up. But man, my mom and dad made a lot of sacrifices to make sure that we had things. We didn't really even realize 
the you know, trials that they were going through at times. And as you become a parent, I think you understand God's love in a, in a different way. Because you do make sacrifices that you wouldn't normally make in that. But if we're giving our, our children good things, what, are, what should we expect from Holy God? When we're praying to Holy God, when we're bringing the, our supplications, our requests to Holy God, what should we expect but good gifts? And good gifts is not just stuff. God does give us stuff. That's not eternal. And it's likely not the primary good things that he gives us. In the parallel passage in Luke, in chapter 11, he actually talks about that these good, instead of good gifts, he says, the Holy Spirit. In other words, spiritual gifts. God gives us so many spiritual gifts. That's that gift of endurance, of, of love, of mercy, of justice as we walk with him. And we have joy in him. We have that peace that passes all understanding. We seek God. He's going to give us good gifts. He's going to give us the things that we need. And here's another thing about God's will when we're praying. Sometimes we might ask for a snake. God's not going to give us a snake. We might not realize it's a snake we're asking for. We may not realize it's a stone we're asking for. But God knows what we need. And God knows how those things are going to hurt us. There are many times that you have to protect children from doing things they're dumb. <laughs> we know they're dumb. Sticking a fork in a light socket. Not a good idea, is it? Putting your hand on the hot burner. We try to protect our children. I saw a recent little blurb online. And someone said, I just thought the other day when I'm driving down the road. And there's a bird that won't get out of my way. And I'm yelling at him, get out of the way before you die. So that's probably how God is with me very often. Get out of the way before you die. Are you not paying attention? God's not going to give us a snake. God's not going to give us that rock. He's going to give us these good gifts. He's going to continue to shape us. He's going to give us things we need in our time. He's going to shape us. Prayer changes things. And supplication is so important as we pray for others and as we pray for ourselves. Let us humbly ask Him and seek Him. Knock. Ask. He's going to give. Seek and you're going to find. Knock and that door is going to be open. We receive all that good from God. Because he always is a, it's always in our best interest what God does, how God answers our prayers. But to receive, we've got to ask. But let's not leave that on the table. To receive, we've got to ask. So if prayer changes things, realize some things would not happen without asking. You realize that? If prayer changes things, some things would not happen without asking. What do we need to ask for God for today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for your, your word to us. I thank you for revealing yourself, your character, Lord, that we do know that you are holy, loving, merciful, and just. And that we know we have full assurance that if we come to Christ, that we will live with you in eternity in heaven. That our sins are forgiven, that they are cast as far as the, the east is from the west, Lord. You love us so much, despite the fact that we don't deserve your love. That we don't deserve salvation. And you have so much good stored up for us, Lord. I pray that you help us just to seek your will and to know you better, Lord. As we, we make these petitions to you. Help us just to humbly come to you. And ask to our Heavenly Father. That you would give us these good things. And that we can be assured that everything that you give us is for our good. Even when you chastise us, Lord. When we have sin that we're not wanting to let go of, those are good things, shaping our character. They don't feel good at the time, Lord, but you have purposes in everything that we face in life. And we know that when we pray for that serpent, we pray for that stone, you're not going to get those things to us, Lord. You know what we need. And I pray that you just help us to humbly come to you every day, Lord, with empty hands and knowing that even the bread on the table the roof of our head, the breath in our lungs are all because of you, Lord. I thank you for your mercies, and I pray you just help us all to continue to know you better. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.